Essentially, what's happening in Ethiopia right now is that there's been a devastating war waged by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and his ruling Oromo Prosperity Party against the country's Amhara region. And unfortunately, following weeks of actually anti-government protests in April 2023, the government decided to send his federal army uh, forces to essentially so pursue so-called extremist forces. But this actually led to fighting between the FANO, which are essentially uh, freedom fighters with private arms, and the federal forces. But actually, we're now seeing use of or deployment of other forces, such as the Oromo Liberation Army, as well as the Tigray People's Liberation Front. And this comes at the heels of the two-year civil war in northern Ethiopia, which was also very devastating. And so just in recent days, we saw the use of drones being deployed and actually bombing civilians in Finota Salam. Uh, there was a, other bombings in uh, neighboring cities, including Debra Burhan, and scores of civilians have been killed. Uh, Rebel, uh, your, your concerns are valid, but there are people who say, for example, that uh, uh, this guy in power has to have a hold on to the security forces. Uh, you can't just let uh, people run around with guns uh, shooting at each other. Uh, uh, as the prime minister of that country, as the person in charge of the, taking that country to the next level, he has the mandate uh, to, for example, to make sure that every citizen in that country is protected. There are these uh, people who have said that some of these people who are picking up arms or getting arms are lawless uh, leaders. Uh, they have defied every other order. How do you respond to that? I think it's important to uh, for people really to educate themselves about what FANO is, because FANO are not malicious. So this isn't a rebel group that's come up to, you know, uh, for some political purpose. These are everyday men and women who have actually taken up private arms as freedom fighters during times of self-defense. So when the region is invaded, when their homelands are invaded, they've had this tradition that goes back many centuries, many uh, maybe millennia. To, the, to, to very ancient times. And so I think what's happening here is that there is this idea that Abiy wants to stabilize the country. But as I said, there, there was this genocide that actually was enabled by federal forces. In some cases, the federal forces not only failed to protect citizens, but they were actually complicit in the targeting of communities. And the Amhara region, unfortunately, is one of the most targeted, has been one of the most targeted regions with multiple invasions. You have apartheid being institutionalized in Ethiopia, where people, for example, for their Amhara identity, were unable to even enter their capital city of Addis Ababa. And this was on top of ethnic cleansing in the capital city. Uh, you talked about uh, the issue of genocide. That's a big word. Uh, uh, we usually don't use the word genocide unless if there is like empirical evidence, something that uh, you can point to and say, this was done on this date. It has numbers or figures to it. Uh, from what you're suggesting, that a genocide has been committed against the people of Amahara, uh, do you have any evidence uh, to support uh, uh, those allegations? Absolutely. Our organization, the Amahara Association of America, has a group of human rights experts on the ground in Ethiopia, which has been documenting these human rights violations for the last three years. And there were other independent groups that have actually tracked these human rights violations going back decades. We don't need to actually see all of this, these, these mass civilian atrocities which are unfolding as we speak in the Amhara region, whether it's the tanks, the shelling, the drone strikes, whatever the case might be.